mind if we uh, walk ways together since we're going in the same direction? Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 worst accents by British actors. Now if you want to discuss it further, we can go outside. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we'll be looking at the most unconvincing on-screen accents attempted by British and Northern Irish stars. Number 10. Liam Neeson's Southern Rancher, The Marksman In this 2021 action thriller, Liam Neeson gives the impression that he's been taking lessons at the Sean Connery School of Accents. The film's eponymous marksman is a Vietnam vet turned rancher living close to the Mexican border. I come here to take the woman and the boy. I was in the Marine Corps, so I suggest you all turn around and adios. He may hail from the American South, but his pronunciation is pure Ballymena. You may be forgiven for wondering whether Neeson is doing an accent at all. I'm taking you to your family in Chicago. After that, I don't care what you do. The Northern Irish actor lends his usual star power to the main role and does at least try to adapt his voice to fit the character. It's a shame it didn't exactly work. How much are they paying you to betray that badge? Number 9. David Tennant as Litvinenko, Litvinenko in the grand tradition of Brits doing phony Russian accents, David Tennant hams it up to the max in this ITV miniseries. I know how this happened. I know when. I know why. The Guardian branded Tennant's Litvinenko accent so bad it's unwatchable. They also drew comparisons with the voice of Portuguese football manager Jose Mourinho. My friend Anna has been killed by Russian state by Vladimir Putin. As most UK citizens would struggle to tell a good Russian accent from a bad one, Tennant might have got away with it, but his natural voice kept slipping through the cracks. The result is a Russian agent who appears to have learned his English in the West Lothian area. I live it so. I made a phone call to arrange next meeting. Number 8. Ray Winston's Boston Mobster, The Departed Ray Winstone is known for his tough guy roles, but they usually call for the actor to use his native London vernacular. However, in preparation for the 2006 action flick The Departed, the English star was off to America and ready to try the Boston accent on for size. Get him a cranberry juice. This unique New England cadence is notoriously difficult to replicate, characterised by dropped R's and a lot of attitude. Oh, please. I ain't gonna hurt you. Although Winston gave it his best efforts, the Cockney geezer always seems to be lurking close to the surface, ready to make an appearance during the character's shoutier scenes. This guy's who answer the questions right, but this guy's a dumb. Number 7. Ewan McGregor's Lumiere, Beauty and the Beast. They're coming! Final checks, everyone! Two tweets! No, you don't! You'd think that 20 years of marriage to a French woman and raising French speaking children would make you an expert in imitating the accent. However, in 2017's Beauty and the Beast, Ewan McGregor proves that this is just not the case. Inhabiting the character of Lumiere, the Scottish actor affects one of the least convincing French accents ever committed to film. I know, darling. Oh, I'm getting more metallic every day. After McGregor's early recordings were dubbed too Mexican, a vocal coach was called in, but it didn't seem to make much difference. The original Lumiere wasn't French either, but he was definitely more convincing. Or maybe that's just nostalgia talking. The honor was mine. Number 6. Emily Blunt's attempt at Irish, Wild Mountain Time Wild Mountain Time is a cliched cocktail of lush green fields, superstitious farmer folk and stereotypes. It feels suspiciously like a spoof or else a hackneyed Hollywood vehicle directly out of the 1940s. Take notice, we're not done, sir. We're not done. Admittedly, the script managed to attract a great cast. It's just a shame their Irish accents are so terrible. Christopher Walken, to his credit, tries his best and acts his socks off, but we're less inclined to forgive the British and Irish stars. Jamie Dornan is actually from Ireland, so why does his accent sound so amateurish? Should I call the vet? Not a morning soon enough to spend money. Go in, you'll catch your death. No. Emily Blunt takes the cake though. She puts over some seriously cheesy lines with a lilting leprechaun brogue that'll make you laugh in all the wrong places. 
I don't know, I might sell it, I might not. <laughs> I'm all a flutter. Number five, Gerard Butler's Irish Charmer, P.S. I Love You. Each paycheck. Donna, you only just started getting regular paychecks. You quit five jobs in two years, well, remember? Talking of awful Irish accents, who could forget Gerard Butler's cringeworthy effort in the naughty's chick flick, P.S. I Love You? Based on the book by Cecilia Rehearn, the film transposed the story setting from Ireland to the US. However, as a nod to the original, the character of Jerry remains Irish. Well, that's what they tell us anyway. The character spends most of the film being dead and doesn't actually appear that often. We fail to see why they couldn't have cast a lesser known Irish actor or simply made the character American. The Irish and Scottish dialects do share some similarities, but not enough to let Butler's accent issues escape scrutiny. Tell me, how long have you been walking for? A few hours. Well, you've probably been in the National Park for a few hours then. Number four, Haley Mills' American Twins, The Parent Trap. Yes, we can make fun of Lindsay Lohan's English accent in 1997's The Parent Trap, but her exaggerated RP is only fair payback for the 1960s original. We're not sisters. I've never seen her before in my life. English actress Hayley Mills played the twins back in the day. In the earlier version, both girls were supposed to be American. Outdoorsy Susan hails from California, while the more genteel Sharon is a Boston native. But well, what about Dad? He's a sensational person. I mean, his friend and all. Mills gave the accents a good go, but most of the time she just sounds English. The actress told the New York Post, The Californian accent was a little easier for me because I was surrounded by it. The Boston accent was more elusive. Very nice girl there. We became quite good friends. Number three, Charlie Hunnam's Cockney geezer, Green Street. Newcastle-born Charlie Hunnam very rarely appears on screen using his natural speaking voice. His American accent is getting pretty good though. Much better, in fact, than his Cockney, as demonstrated in the 2005 crime drama Green Street. If you're having a bubble, Bob, you know I can't take a yank to football. Hunnam stars as football hooligan and native Londoner Pete, but he sounds more like an Aussie by way of South Africa. Whether you're attempting Cockney or a South London twang, the accent in the capital is a tricky one to master. Yeah, yeah, you know where you're going. Back to Shans. Bank Station, right? Yeah, but keep your head down. Bloody Birmingham lot will be on the tube. Well, that's alright, I'll manage. However, in a fight for the crown of worst ever Cockney imitation, Hunnam could easily give Dick Van Dyke a run for his money. Get yourself cleaned up! Number two, Sean Connery's Irish cop, The Untouchables. The late Sean Connery was well known for playing every role in his trademark Scottish accent, from the Egyptian swordsman in Highlander to that famous old Etonian James Bond. However, in The Untouchables, Connery broke with tradition and had a crack at an Irish brogue. You just fulfilled the first rule of law enforcement. Make sure when your shift is over you go home alive. This was later voted the worst film accent of all time. The 1980s action film was set in Al Capone's Chicago and Connery played an Irish American cop called Jim Malone. I'm talking to you. Did you come here to open a shooting gallery? The Chicago accent could have worked when the Irish proved too difficult, but instead, Connery simply reverted to his natural speaking voice halfway through the film. Mighty's ruined this town. Eh? For ten years I can't eat my food with the shit that's going on. And say that I'm a cop. Number one, Michael Caine's Texas Oil Baron on Deadly Ground. Now wouldn't that be lovely? And we lose all our rights. Worth billions of dollars a week. The stereotypical southern drawl is one accent that British actors love to try on for size. Daniel Craig camped it up as Benoit Blanc in the Knives Out films, and Colin Firth tried out a Texan accent to mixed success in Main Street. But the prize for the dodgiest American accent of all time has to go to national treasure Michael Caine. Now why the hell would I do that to myself on purpose? The famous Londoner's take on a Texas oil baron is all over the place. Kane's voice sounds completely different from one scene to the next. It's definitely entertaining, but otherwise, there's no defending it. It's really bad. I don't know what you did with my rig, Forrest, but whatever it was, I want you to stop it. Turn it off. I'm leaving. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo UK and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.